Hello YouTube friends. The last time we saw this um, quilt commission that I'm making, which is a flying goose quilt, uh, I got it to this stage uh, where I'd sewn to that point. I'm making the no waste uh, flying goose quilt block that yields four units from one set of sewing. So this one here, I'm just putting on the small square onto the strain shaped block that I've created, which will, when I sew this, it will make, it'll make the geese. Now, at the very beginning of this, if you've been following along, you'll know that I drew the lines on with my pen. Uh, and it was a fabric pen that is removed by heat. So, of course, when I lay the new square on top of that, the uh, the line disappears. So, look, I'm having to uh, use an ordinary pen and draw them back in again. So that's made twice the work. That was annoying. It's a good pen, but not for this use. So, uh, as I said then, uh, yeah, last time, I'm not offering this as a tutorial. It's just that this is all I'm doing at the moment. Uh, this. And so uh, <laughs> there's nothing else to talk about, really. It's a very good way of making flying geese. I like it a lot. And uh, so you can see um, in a second, I think I show you. Yeah, hang on. In a second, there we go. So I've slowed this down so that you can see when I put that square on there, the, li the line just disappears with the heat of the piece underneath it. It's very annoying. So I'm having to draw that line on again. That's OK. It's not that big a hardship. So I've got it to the point now where um, I've made all the base blocks, which I'm showing you here. So either side of that uh, sew line there. All the way along. So when I'm doing this, I've got an audio book on or some music or something going on in the background. And I just spend long periods of time, like hours at a time, just doing the same chain piecing, the same movement over and over again, which I really enjoy. And these are uh, uh, this is the colours the customer chose and they're so bright and zingy to work with. I'm really enjoying them. There's... um. I can't remember how many, 308 units in the end, I think, something like that. I can't remember how many. So there we go, stitching away. And then the next bit is, of course, those of you who are quilters know exactly what I'm doing. We then cut up that line there and iron it back. And there's my quilt unit. There's still one more process to do before they're ready to sew together. And that's because I like everything to be nice and neat. So I take my ruler and with a using the 45 degree uh, uh, line on my ruler, I line that up with the, you can't quite see, but I'm lining up my 45 degree line with the side of the goose and then clipping off the dog ears. There, you can see it's a bit better on the lighter one. There's the 45 degree line. Line it up carefully there. Make sure that I leave as much as possible at the top so I don't lose the point when I'm sewing the seams. So all the dog ears are cut now and now I can stitch them together. Now I'm being very careful when I stitch them together to sew them from the point with the pointy end on the top so that I can make sure I don't, I mean, it's hard not to lose the points on some of them and I may have done on some, but trying really hard not to lose the points. So if I sew it with the uh, point on the top, I can see where that I'm sewing just the other side of that, um, that X that makes the top of the sew lines of the, of the goose. <laughs> So there they all are, chain piece together in blocks of four. This is how I like to do it. You could, of course, put the units anywhere. You don't have to do them in blocks of four, but I think they look really well like this. Once you've made the units, you could put them anywhere, but I like to sew them like that. 
and now I'm going to press them. This big pile that I've got here, I'm going to press them all open. So now I've got to that point then where I've got all those units, which are six inches by 12. And then I put them on my design board. And this is the point at which I'm going to stop showing you what I'm doing here. Because the customer, I mean, I did promise that we wouldn't see this until uh, after she'd received it. But it's been fun to share this with you. And I think I've had a few comments from her and she doesn't seem to mind. So that's OK. But I'm not going to show you the placement of the pieces and the sewing together and the quilting until after I finish doing that. So this is the last time you'll see this quilt for a bit, guys. And uh, we'll get back to um, <laughs> um, other sorts of chat now. So let's look at some hexagons because I'm having to face this way because the quilt that I'm working on is over there. All laid out, looking very colourful. I'm just trying to decide on um, the layout of it all before I then sew the final quilt top together. So we can't look at that, but we'll look at some hexagons instead. Now the amorphous blob that I've been working on hasn't really got a great deal bigger. This is uh, the hexagons that I've made out of all the scraps of blues and greens that I've got. And I'm just I just pick it up, pick one out of the basket, sew it on nearby, you know, to wherever it fits and looks well. And it's just growing organically like that. And so people were interested in this one, but I haven't been doing very much with the amorphous blob because when I stop working on this and settle down for the evening with my supper and watch a bit of telly with a cat on my knee. I've been knitting. So this is um, some lovely variegated sock yarn. I like knitting with variegated because uh, the colours change and it keeps it interesting. And I'm knitting a sock here, the first of a pair. And uh, I've just started to knit the heel last night. Uh, Sock knitting's really easy. Don't be put off by all these um, four needles and so on. The people who knit socks will know that knitting a very easy sock pattern is actually not that hard. And I have a very simple sock pattern and that's what I knit. So that's what I've been doing in the evening instead of sewing on the amorphous blob. However, it made me think with the people who left some really lovely comments about my hexagon uh, sewing what I was doing two or three Saturday, uh, Sundays ago, I thought um, I'd show you the quilt that my mum made for me. Now my mum died just over two years ago and uh, she was quilting right up until a few months before she died and she used to like, just like me, I must have got the habit from her when I'm sitting watching the telly or sitting you know waiting for a train or something <laughs> I've got a little bit of hand stitching or hand knitting uh, that I take along with me and just, you know, just something in a small bag. That's why sock knitting is so good, because you can take this anywhere, just pop it in a bag and take it with you anywhere. And so you can with the hexagons as well. Uh, but my mum, she would always, I remember the routine would be that they would have their lunch, she and my dad. And then dad would go and have um, what he called his, uh, his 40 winks. What, what did he call it? Ten. I'll just have 10 minutes, he'd say. And um, it was almost half an hour or more. He was usually at least half an hour. Just go and have 10 minutes. And he'd go in the sitting room or wherever and, and uh, on the sofa and just have a bit of a nap. Well, my mum didn't do that. And so she would go into the, uh, the conservatory. It was a nice sunny conservatory. And so hexagons or so or knit socks or or whatever. Anyway, she made this quilt for me and I'm, I've got it uh, up. I've, I don't use it on my bed. Um, isn't it funny that, you know, you don't use really precious things. Why don't we do that? This is too precious to use. Uh, it's just it's, it's so lovely. It's too precious to use. And so I'm going to lay it out on my bed and I'm going to show it to you. Uh, and this is the handmade um, hexagon quilt that my mum made for me, maybe, I don't know, um, 10 years ago, something like that. Come on, let's go and have a look at it.
this is the grandmother's flower garden that some of you said that you like to stitch when I talked about hexagons last time. And so every single piece is hand stitched together, quilted, she quilted all the way round the, each of the what we call petals, I suppose. And then these little lozenge shapes which fill in the spaces where the white spaces are. And that's pretty spectacular, isn't it? Every single piece hand pieced and every single piece hand quilted. And then if I come up here, there. Two thousand and six. See a little charm there, handmade. And I see that she's got a hanging sleeve on it here that she stitched on. So this has been in an exhibition, and I know which exhibition it's been in as well, because she was in a quilt club, and every second year they had a uh, a quilt um, exhibition. And this one, I remember one year was hanging in there. I had no idea she'd made it for me. It's rather amazing, isn't it? I wonder how many hours that took her. 2006, she made it. But she didn't give it to me till about 2011, 12, something like that. So it was probably shown a few times. But it's huge. Look at the overhang as well. So no, I don't use it on my bed and I'm not going to use it on my bed. Uh, it's just too special. I know that's silly. Um, you can see in the background there, that's my trip around the world quilt. So the quilt that I have got on my bed, let me show you what that one is. As I've just put this over on the top of it. I love how she's done the edge look. She hasn't straightened the edge off, has she? She's actually followed the edge round, so the edge has got a lovely scalloped appearance to it, uh, which I think is really lovely. But on my bed, normally, <laughs> if we just carefully take this one off. Well, that's a nice block. I like that one. With the blues there. So on my bed for every day. I've got this quilt, which is, uh, it's a St. Louis 16 patch quilt, which is not a quilt block I've talked about or shown you on the channel. It's a very simple one. I'm sure there are loads of tutorials, but maybe one day I will, because if we just look at one block there, you can see it's a four by four checkerboard and it's terribly simple to make. And I think why I like this one so much I mean, I love my mum's, don't get me wrong. I absolutely love it, but I, it's just too, it's just too special. This quilt though, is made with a fabric from a designer called Anna Maria Horner. Uh, I wonder if you've heard of her. Uh, she's an American designer. And um, so here I have two lines of her fabric. I think I got two half yard bundles. I think they were bigger than fat quarters. Uh, in two different lines. Now, she has one line that's just called True Colours and then another one which was called, um, oh, now then, what was it called? It was all the healing flowers in her garden. Um, and so there were Echinacea um, here, Echinacea and uh, Milk Thistle and... Um, there's some primroses there. There's uh, eucalyptus. Uh, all different kinds of flowers. Aloe vera, stylized there. Uh, what was it called? I can't remember what the name of it was. But anyway, this quilt then is quite big. And this one, again, just like mum's, it just hangs down the sides a fair bit. And I like this quilt because it's so bright and cheerful and colourful and not precious. I don't mind a bit what happens to this. You know, this can go in the wash and be um, worn and used again and again. And so 
I wouldn't want to do that with mum's. So mum's unfortunately stays in a moth-proof bag in my wardrobe. Which is probably a shame, isn't it? What I might do though. I might put it back on just for today. I'm gonna try putting it on with the lozenges going the other way. Let's see if see what that looks like. I will just put it back on. Yeah, that's better. I like the lozenges going that way. That looks more like it's supposed to be. And you know what? Maybe as tomorrow's my birthday, I'll sleep underneath it tonight and remember my mum. Because, um, you know, 64 years ago, she was very, very pregnant indeed. <laughs> <laughs>